of Senate File 1641, its third reading. Senate File Number 1641, a bill for an act relating to health, permitting the medical use of cannabis. Secretary will take the roll. Oh, sorry. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam President. Just a few comments. Um, members, uh, uh, we've had a robust, at, at the very least, uh, conversation today about, about an issue where uh, I think, uh, I happen to believe that we're on a, uh, oh, I don't care whatever term you come up with. I think I did hear Senator Westrom talk about a slippery slope here a while ago. Well, that was the first time it was used today, but uh, nevertheless, I think we are heading in the direction, uh, if, uh, if this gets passed, of, uh, of a real different complexion of the state of Minnesota. And my fear is, uh, and has always been about, not law enforcement, but about the kids and uh, what, what kind of a message we're going to be sending to them, and, and uh, especially in light of the uh, studies that have been done and, uh, from the uh, White House where uh, they uh, have done extensive studies and spent literally millions and millions of dollars on this issue. And, and members, uh, uh, you know, I've been using the term law enforcement an awful lot here today, and I tried to qualify that the other day, that it isn't just about law enforcement. Law enforcement is, quite frankly, the first responder that, that deals with, with, uh, with problems and, uh, that, that result from all kinds of drug abuse. And so I, I bring that expertise to this body, but quite frankly, uh, uh, let's never forget what their job is. Let's never forget why they take a stand that they're taking today. It's because of public safety, and that should send up a red flag for everybody. Uh, the, so members, uh, I ask for a, a red vote today. Let's put this back on the, on the, uh, on the table uh, uh, of discussion. And uh, it sounds like that the uh, FDA is about a year and a half away from, from okaying the uh, uh, CBD portion of uh, marijuana. And I think you will see law enforcement, prosecutors, and a whole lot of other folks that are concerned today step down, stand down, and uh, uh, be just fine with uh, the FDA approved stuff. So members, I ask you to vote red today because I think it, it just needs an awful lot of, lot of work. Senator Limmer. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, earlier in the presentation, there was a representation that perhaps uh, Sheriff Stanick from Hennepin County may have been in support of this bill. I called the sheriff to confirm that, and uh, in a text written back to me, uh, just to clear any, any uh, question, Sheriff Stanick is not in support of this particular bill. Senator Weger. Thank you, Madam President, members. At the beginning of the session, I wasn't quite sure how I would vote on this. I had concerns registered by law enforcement, uh, treatment professionals, uh, a number of these issues which have been given a good hearing, and I commend Senator Dibble and others for their work. But I didn't decide until last week. I had a call, and actually there was a message I would like to talk to you about medical marijuana, and it was from my mother, and I thought, well, we're going to get a lecture about why it would be wrong. And mom said, Uncle Bill is dying. Uncle Bill, who also lives in Maplewood, served his country proudly, worked very hard throughout his life, a good neighbor, and he's in the most courageous battle of his life now with cancer and endures a great deal of pain like many others, young through old. It, earlier there was mention that there's not too many Minnesotans that might be affected, so why are we spending time on this? For God's sake, if people are suffering and we have the ability to provide a way to alle alleviate that pain, let's hear their concern. Let's hear their prayer to mom, to Uncle Bill, to Uncle Bill's doctor who pleaded that the legislature take action for those many people 
that are asking for us to take action to address their pain. I say, thank you for your participation, and I'm voting yes. Senator Nelson. Thank you, Madam President, members. Well, we've had a long discussion today. We all have compassion on those uh, children who are not receiving medical treatments that are able to help with the particular medical conditions that are enlisted in this bill. But I think it's become very clear as we've listed, as we've listened today, we are sorely lacking the scientific randomized clinical trials upon which sound medicine is built in this state. We are the focus, we are the mecca, so to speak, of clinical research in this state. And so it should not be a surprise to any of us or those listening today that the Commissioner of Health testified in opposition to this bill, as did the Commissioner of Health and Human Services, as did the Commissioner with the Department of Corrections. In addition, the Minnesota Medical Society also has specifically stated that there is no science to really say where med med medical marijuana works well and where it doesn't. And we don't have a no way of knowing at this point in time what the availability of the drug is and the product that's being used. And the very document that the proponent of this bill referenced in committee in an attempt to substantiate the um, advocacy for medical marijuana if you read it, members, it consistently says that more research is needed. And the conditions uh, that this bill describes, sometimes it says that, uh, well, let's take Tourette's syndrome, for example. That's one of the conditions that this bill is specifically looking at medical marijuana as a potential help. Well, it says some research, this is about Tourette syndrome, some research reports that marijuana may improve some symptoms of Tourette syndrome. However, significant benefit over placebo is lacking for ticks and other symptoms. More research is needed in this area. That is consistently what it says. More research is needed. Glaucoma is another instance in this bill, another identified condition where where the author of this bill assumes that medical marijuana may be helpful. Well, here's what it says about that. Uh, people who have glaucoma have high pressure in the eye, which may lead to optic nerve damage and vision loss. Some studies suggest that THC may lower eye pressure, while CBD may lack benefit or actually increase pressure. More research is needed, and that is for every one of the issues that is discussed in this bill. The research is not there. And again, it says that the uses are based on tradition or theory. They often have not been thoroughly tested in humans and safety and effectiveness have not always been proven. I could go on and on, but the fact is we don't have the scientific information and the clinical studies that we need in order to treat marijuana as a medicinal prescribing product. Secondly, the federal restrictions do not allow for studying medical marijuana, and that we've had amendments to try and encourage that. I'll be presenting a resolution uh, to the body so that we can resolve as the senators in the state of Minnesota that we want the feds to allow the clinical studies that are needed. But until that time, members, we'll be, ha we'll be in conflict with federal law. So imagine this, uh, obeying the law in Minnesota at the same time that you are breaking federal law. That puts all of our prescribing physicians, families, patients, in a very difficult decision. 
And it's my fear that in passing medical marijuana now, which is very premature, we know that the information, the scientific information is not there. We know that the laws do not align with the feds. I fear that we will actually deter the type of study that is so needed so that it is not an anecdote. It's not like a tonic. It's not like um, medicine that uh, of, of years and years ago when we didn't have it based upon data. So I encourage you, I encourage members to stand firm with the commissioners from health, health and human services, your medical, Minnesota Medical Association, the Department of Corrections, and cast a no vote on this today, today, but encourage research so that we can have a more informed position after we get the necessary data. Senator Benson. Thank you, Madam President and members. Um, when we first got this bill, I had a lot of concerns. Um, it's kind of a joke about the number of post-it notes that I use to flag areas of concern, but there have been significant changes. And as the changes move forward, we saw the bill tighten to focus greatly on doctors and their medical judgment to meet the needs of patients. Let's be clear, doctors prescribe FDA medicines off-label, and they do it frequently. And most patients don't even know they've gotten an off-label prescription. The FDA is not sacrosanct. It is important, but it is not the only way we gain medical information. There are standards of practice and standards of care. And they will be very important in Minnesota as we go forward with medical cannabis. We allow doctors to use their judgment to meet the needs of their patients. We respect their professionalism. No one will be compelled to act against their conscience. In Arizona, doctors have been disciplined for not following the law. Arizona and New Mexico form the models for this legislation. There's been a lot of talk about other states. But I would urge those who are uncomfortable with this step to look at what is happening in Arizona and New Mexico. I think our bill is actually better than theirs, tighter than theirs, more focused on doctors and patients, and clearly with the penalties and fines that are put in place in this bill, sending a strong signal that marijuana is not something to be trifled with, that it is serious and should be used prudently under the guidance of a doctor. Now, we've talked a little bit about the worry of legalization. Washington passed through initiative and referendum. Colorado passed as an amendment. In California, their initiative failed. So members, as concerns about legalization move forward, remember it has to come through these bodies. We have a large say in what happens in this, in legalization terms. We do not have the Colorado model. We do not have the Washington model. We do not even have the California model. So members, this language is tight. It is focused on doctors and patients. Let's circle back to what we're trying to accomplish, giving doctors a tool that they do not now have if they choose to use it for their patients. And I will be supporting this bill. Is there any other discussion on Senate File 1641? Senator Ninao. Thank you, Madam President. You know, I'll be honest, and I've told this to, I don't know if I've told this directly to Senator Dibble, but I've told this to the proponents. If the bill before us today had looked anything like what the bill did when it was introduced, um, you know, what you saw from Senator Ingerbritson here today would have been a sideshow compared to what, how I would have been opposing this bill. But it has changed dramatically, and I will, I, I will give, again, compliments uh, to Senator Dibble and the proponents of this legislation. Not Senator Dibble, but uh, a couple of the individuals working on this particular issue sat down and met in my office for three hours, one-on-one, -on -one, and, and I went through three pages of line-by-line -line notes and questions and concerns where I said, what does this do? Why is this here? Why can't we do this? You need to fix this. You need to fix that. 
And to their credit, most of those concerns were added into um, the initial amendment that was uh, offered up in the Health and Human Services Policy Committee. And again, to their credit, as this bill moved through the committee process, most of the rest of the concerns and problems that I had were rectified and, and fixed. If, 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 I'm not going to stand here and try and convince you to vote one way or the other, but if, if, if your belief is that by allowing for the medical use of cannabis and allowing a doctor to tell a patient, this might help you, if you think that is the first step towards legalizing and recreational use across the board for everybody, you're never going to find any kind of medicinal cannabis bill that you can vote for. But if you think that there are at least some legitimate medicinal purposes and that that is a conversation to be had between a doctor and a patient, and if you realize the difficulty that is created at the federal level and the bureaucracy that is out there that prevents the FDA from doing its own study that it wants to do, if you think there might be circumstances where it makes sense, this is a pretty tight bill. That's about as tight as you're probably going to get. You could tweak around the edges a little bit. I'll admit that. But this is a pretty tight bill. You are not going to have people that have their card going and getting an ounce or two ounces of this product and going home and selling it to their neighbor or giving it to their brother. Because in the bill, that's a felony. That's a big deal. You can go to prison for that. You, there are jobs you can't get. You can have trouble finding housing. If their neighbor goes and buys it on the street, it's about a $200 fine and a misdemeanor. No big deal. It's a slap on the wrist. But if somebody with one of those cards hands them a joint, it's a felony. That's a big deal. So we're not incentivizing broad distribution. We're not creating access. People can't grow it in their garage. It has to be in an enclosed facility. When proponents of this came to me initially and said, could you possibly support medicinal cannabis? What I said to them is, if you want to treat it like a medicine, then we need to treat it like a medicine. You need to have a closed system where it's not readily available to the public and they're making their own. We don't let people make their own morphine. We're not going to let people grow their own cannabis. We have a closed, tight system where a doctor has consulted with a patient and said, here are the risks and here are the benefits. And that's what they do every single day. There are some harsh, harsh medications that doctors prescribe every day that will do your body grievous harm but it's going to save your life. And that's a cost-benefit analysis that a doctor and a patient have to make with one another. If we had a weaker bill than what we had in front of us, I would, without hesitation, vote no. But I think we have a proposal that is going to find the balance between protecting the general public from undue and unwarranted additional marijuana on the streets but yet try to find a way and thread that needle for those people that have cancer and glaucoma and, and th these various ailments that for whatever reason, this, this seems to be working for them. I and I'm willing to let the doctor and the patient make that decision while yet still putting in those public safety controls to make sure that we don't have rampant distribution just because people are growing it in their garage. Thank you, members. Senator Rosen. Thank you, Madam President. And, and Madam President, members, we have done an excellent job in this state when we are dealing with drugs. But we have a lot of drug issues. And one of them is, of course, the rise of uh, methamphetamine is back on. Heroin, of course. And um, our prescription drug abuse, especially by our children and I am 
deeply concerned about the children and the potential of their ability to, to get a hold of this drug and abuse it. We have no safeguards on that at all. This would, that's why it's important to perhaps pass that prescription monitoring program and pass this, this bill through that. But these children will be dramatically affected by an increased use of marijuana. The statistics show that. Research is, shows that. The thing that troubles me the most about this bill, and it's not that we don't want to provide relief, it's that all the stakeholders were not at the table. And when we did the historic work on the methamphetamine, I was the chief author of that bill, everybody was at the table. And we took away your Sudafed, folks. Talk about that was, a, that, was a, that was groundbreaking. But everybody came to the table and said, this is the right thing to do. And unfortunately, we do, don't have the consensus of everybody at the table on this bill. You still have law enforcement has great concerns. Our county attorneys have great concerns. Anybody that works with the adolescent community, ch uh, children psychologists have great concerns. The treatment com community has great concerns. The other day, I had folks from my district from drug court and I was talking to them about medical marijuana and they laughed because they knew that there was so much ability for abuse with that. They didn't laugh because, uh, because it doesn't work. They laughed because of the abuse. And that's where I'm going at. I'm very, very concerned about where we're headed and that we don't have the consensus of folks. Colorado passed medical marijuana in 2002. 2012, they legalized it. And I'm going to tell you folks, I was born and raised there, I go back there quite a bit. My mom and my family, my grandbaby is there, my son. It is a different place. It is not the Colorado I grew up in. And if this is the direction, hopefully this is not the direction we are headed with this bill. I'm hoping that this is it. Medical marijuana is it. But if there's any intention of heading towards legalizing marijuana, we have got a serious situation on our hands. So. I will not be voting for this bill today. Madam Chair, members, I do appreciate Senator Dibble's work on the bill, but I, I do believe there was some amendments that could have been adopted, that should have been adopted, and unfortunately, um, I believe we could have come up with a better bill that would have brought everybody to the table. Are there any more final comments, Senator Pratt? Thank you, Madam President. Um, you know, I've been torn on this issue since the beginning of session, and I have the utmost respect for Senator Deringa Bretson and his concerns and Senator Rosen and what she just said, I, I fully understand. And I've listened to the concerns of law enforcement and weighed those and, and listened to them very, very carefully. Uh, I also know how addictive marijuana can be and, and uh, have seen uh, many many young people go through treatment uh, for abuse of this drug. However, my decision today and my vote today is based on several other factors. First of all, I'm pleased to see that smoking of medical marijuana was taken out of the bill. I think this was uh, a, a move that adds credibility to its medicinal use. I just respectfully disagree. I don't believe this is the first step towards recreational use. I think that's up to us. And uh, it, while it's happened in Colorado and Washington, we haven't seen that same move in, in some of the other states. I believe the controls in this bill will reduce the likelihood that the process will be corrupted. And I think we also need to be careful about getting too close and too far in between doctors and their patients. So. I also want to emphatically state, I think for my district most of all, I will not support recreational use of marijuana. Not at all. So, you know, I've been moved by the stories of families that have been splitting up in order to get treatment for sick family members that they believe will benefit. 
Um, I, don't, I don't think there's a member in this body that wouldn't do what they needed to do to get a loved one the treatment that they felt they needed in order to make them feel better, to ease their pain. And I want these families to stay together, and I want, them, I want these seriously ill patients to be surrounded by their friends and loved ones. So I'm going to support this bill today because I believe it does a good job of balancing the needs between the patients' needs and the controls in place to keep it from being abused. And members, I encourage you to vote yes with me. Is there any more discussion? Any more final comments before we turn to the author? Senator Dibble. Uh, thanks, uh, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, I'll be brief because the um, folks who preceded me in final comments uh, articulated many of the sentiments that I wanted to, uh, but did so with, uh, uh, with much more passion and much more articulately than I could. I just wanted to take this opportunity, uh, Madam President, to thank everyone. I think um, we've modeled, again, um, uh, the ability to have uh, a very, very vigorous policy discussion and debate, uh, people who feel very strongly about this issue uh, and really putting their best arguments forward. Um, and I think all through the process, although it's been somewhat expedited, as we've noticed over the last week and a half, two weeks or so, um, we've had an excellent discussion. Uh, and I'll just echo the sentiments that the changes that have been made along the way to the bill have been good ones. Um, well, not all good, but uh, they've been representing, they've represented good compromise. Um, and everyone has given a little bit, and I appreciate that. And I just really want to take this opportunity to express my profound respect and appreciation for folks who take a different view on this subject. Uh, and I understand that uh, we have different perspectives, uh, and, um, and we're responding to those perspectives. Uh, and that's appropriate, and, and we're representing those views uh, energetically. But I also want to take the opportunity to say that um, I think we have a good bill, and we've responded to a lot of the concerns uh, and done so actually in uh, much better than even other states have done so. Um, those who are concerned about uh, the implications around safety, security, and, and health, I think we've responded to those uh, very effectively and very well, and we have the ability to respond with compassion to people who are suffering who have nothing else available to them. That's the crux of this proposal. There's nothing available for a lot of folks to address the conditions and the, and the circumstances with which, which, which they struggle. So we're trying to find that balance. And we're also showing and modeling to the state of Minnesota that we can grapple with complex issues and work through them and find solutions that work. And I think that's, if this bill were to become law, um, I don't think Minnesota will be prof changed profoundly. Minnesota will make true what's always been true about Minnesota, and that is we extend that hand of compassion uh, we work through complicated issues. Uh, we work together to solve problems that exist in the lives of Minnesotans. So again, thank you very much uh, for this uh, long and excellent and respectful debate. Uh, if I got a little cranky from time to time, I apologize. Um, it was always with love. So thank you very much, Madam President. The Secretary will take the roll on Senate File 1641. Senate is under call.
All members having voted, the secretary will close the roll. There being 48 ayes and 18 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.